ik uh, de laptop ja, aan. Ja, kan pakken. Ja, yeah, thanks for the introduction. So yeah, um, yeah, my name is Dave, um, and I want to take you back to uh, 1999. I was uh, 18 years old uh, and a big, uh, a big hip hop uh, fan. And uh, back during the days, I was visiting all the hip hop concerts uh, in, an, in the Netherlands. So I, I travel by train uh, mostly four times a week. Uh, missed the last train, of course. Had to sleep on the station and get back with the first train uh, and that like for a lot of years. Uh, and in that period, it's really, I know it's very, uh, very uh, old, uh, old timing, but we didn't have internet still. So it's just word of mouth where all the parties are, uh, where the albums uh, were dropping, that kind of stuff. So in like around 2000 uh, and yeah, 99, uh, I received internet myself uh, at home. Um, and I was thinking, okay, then I'm going to look all the hip-hop parties up uh, that are uh, in the Netherlands. But there wasn't any websites online uh, about that uh, topic. Uh, there were only two uh, hip-hop websites online. They were Amsterdam-based and they were in English. And I was like, why? <laughs> because in Rotterdam there were a lot of things going on and a lot of, a lot of different uh, cities in the Netherlands as well. So I decided, okay, let's make a hip-hop website. But there was one big problem, I didn't know how. Uh, so I was just you know, looking up all the tutorials and yet the different pro programs that you can you know, work with. So yeah, I built a, I built a, web, a website uh, in a couple of days, I guess. And um, I went to another party, uh, there was a freestyle uh, session and uh, one of the uh, MCs that, that was on, um, uh, he was freestyling a, a line about hip hop in your face. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I think that's a good title for the website. So yeah, I, I uh, got uh, the, the URL uh, to get it online. And yeah, from that point, uh, the website uh, was born as a hobby. Um, and I did everything myself. I took pictures uh, from, from parties, I write articles. I had an event uh, calendar online, um, and so it started out. Uh, a lot of people, because the scene, the hip hop scene was very small, so every time you see, you know, diff uh, the same people. Um, so a lot of people uh, knew already back then about what was I doing, and a lot of people came up to me and said, yeah, I want to be a part of it. So in a couple of years, uh, yeah, we had a team. We had people that want to write articles, we had photographers and there was no money. <laughs> like for the first 10 years, there was like no budget. Um, and we were really, you know, in love with, with hip hop, with a, with a group of people. Um, and we were thinking about, okay, we want to see our favorite rapper from the United States, you know, perform. But no, uh, no events in the Netherlands uh, yeah, wanted, to, wanted to book that kind of artist because they were too underground. Um, and you have to think about like now, you know, everybody knows hip hop music, everybody knows what, what hip hop is. And it's very popular, but back then, if you, if you go to a venue and you say, yeah, I want to organize a hip hop party, people were like, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> because they're going to be fights, they're going to be illegal graffiti, etc etc um, so it was very hard back then to you know to organize um, and I think uh, what kind of funny we were talking with the group of people with team so yeah which artists do you want to want to see perform so we made a list and we were thinking okay it would be great if we could, could you know get that artist to the Netherlands and we're thinking okay how much money uh, will it cost so we put all the money that we had together um, and um, yeah, we contact the artist, we flew him in um, and you know, did our own concerts and a lot of, you know, a lot of people uh, you know, were very enthusiastic about it and so the, the platform uh, keep, uh, keeps on growing. Could you show the website uh, maybe? It would be great, thanks. Um, yeah, so that was like the like, like the start, so like the first 10 years, it was, it was just a hobby, it was a lot of passion uh, with, a, with a big group of people um, and you know, the team keeps growing and growing. Um, 
and to, to celebrate our 10th uh, anniversary, um, we organized uh, a very big project we worked on for, for two years. It was uh, one of the first uh, yeah, multimedia uh, hip hop projects. We, uh, we made a book, uh, a movie, an album, an exhibition, and a festival. And you know, everybody was volunteering still. Two years, people were, were, you know, uh, were studying during the day, working at the project during the night, or some people had a job already, were working daily, and then in the night they were like working on the projects, and you know, some relationships collapsed during that project. <laughs> but it was still worth it, I think. <laughs> because you know, nowadays hip-hop is very popular, but still, you know, we released it in 2009, and Till the day, till, uh, until the, today, nothing like that released in the Netherlands. So I think you know it's really important to know that you know how important the project was. Um, yeah, we started like as an event calendar, uh, as I said before, uh, and after that, we became the platform. Before social media, we had like the discussion forum. People were talking about everything, politics. Holidays, movies, albums, everything was, uh, was discussed over there. Then with the introduction of social media, of course, everybody received their own space. So, you know, all the forums died probably. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, so we need to re redevelop the whole platform. Um, so I think this is like, this is our last version. This is like the actual website, uh, how it is today. Um, and we were able to, uh, to get fun funding uh, in Rotterdam um, so we could you know, redevelop uh, the team, re redevelop the, the platform and all the, uh, the projects that we did. So um, like nowadays, if we talk about 2023, we have like um, street art is very important for us, uh, education is very important to us uh, and spoken word and our platform function is, uh, or, uh, is also very important for us. Um, and uh, if we talk about uh, street art, uh, we started like eight years ago. Uh, we were talking about a lot of local artists and they were complaining about Rotterdam. And they said, yeah, I can, I can paint walls all over the world. And when I, I come back in Rotterdam, I can't do anything. I only can, you know, work inside and if I want to do something outside it's not uh, it's not possible that had to do with the 90s because in the 90s we had a lot of illegal graffiti uh, in the city it was like everywhere on stores trams uh, metros buses it was like a, cr a crazy a crazy era so the government decided a zero tolerance uh, about graffiti but also like art in public spaces uh, if it has to do with a spray can, it's illegal. <laughs> so when you try to do something that, that, like that, like uh, from that time, uh, you know, the police was hunting you down and you know, you had a, you had a big problem. So uh, the government wasn't very keen about uh, more art uh, in the streets. Um, so we decided uh, to think about, you know, which project can we, uh, can we do to change that, to give the artists from Rotterdam a platform in their own city. Um, yeah, we developed uh, the project Rewriters um, eight years ago. It took us two years to talk about, uh, to talk with uh, a lot of people from the politics as well. And um, yeah, and we were able uh, to develop the project and the project was to create a street art route in the city of Rotterdam because that's the most difficult area in the city. And we were, we were thinking about, okay, if we can do it in the city center, we can do it everywhere. Um, so yeah, we, we started out looking for, uh, looking for walls that the artists could, uh, could paint. And it was very hard because nobody on the, understand it, the whole concept. <laughs> and nobody, there wasn't a lot of street art in Rotterdam yet. Uh, we only had maybe nine, uh, nine walls and mostly of the walls were created illegally. So nobody was understanding like the whole thing about murals and street art. Um, but you know, we, we still worked, worked, worked. And then we were able to do uh, uh, one wall 
it's very close uh, close by I was looking can you see it yeah it's like you see the graphically same building the white building and then the front the gray the gray painting that was our first uh, uh, yeah the first yeah, mural that we uh, yeah that we did and from that from that point everything took off everybody understand the concept and we could develop 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 um, and like in I think in one year time we created 10 murals in the city center we were able to create a, a special application it still uh, it still works it's still in the stores um, and it, it is a street art uh, route uh, it started out as a street art route in the center um, and from that point everybody was uh, enthusiastic so people contacted me from different neighborhoods and if we do fast forward until now the app contains now eight routes I think more than 80 uh, murals uh, in there um, and yeah and now it's like street art is really accepted uh, here and the funny thing is that like the people that we talked with in the beginning uh, from the from the government they you know th they didn't want it and like five years later they did their own street art projects <laughs> so um, yeah so that is that is one of the the big projects that we did like from from that point and you know when uh, when we were able to to create the the whole street art tours and the street art plat platform uh, we were thinking about okay but you know what's another challenge and you know we still for us it's important to you know to to talk with the artists because we're we are a platform so you know if artists miss something or people have ideas but they don't know how to do it then you know we always uh, want to talk uh, with them so one of the other complaints uh, was the fact that there is uh, a short of uh, exhibition space in Rotterdam. It's still a big problem. Um, so we were able to create our own exhibition space uh, here in the center. It's like uh, two, it's two streets from here in the Delfse Straat. We have our office there and the exhibition uh, space and it's called uh, yeah, the Hip Hop In Face uh, uh, Room. <laughs> And uh, from that point, when we, when we opened it, uh, now we have like monthly uh, exhibitions. And it's not only street art, if you are a photographer or you are another artist that are looking for space, you know, just, just let, uh, let me know because, you know, for us it's important to, you know, to program the space. So that was one of the things that we, uh, that we released uh, also. Um, yeah, education is very important for us, you know, uh, to, you know to work with the new generation so we do a lot of projects with uh, with schools um, we were able to uh, to create a second a second space uh, and then in uh, Rotterdam South uh, near Feyenoord and there we have a very big location where we can receive uh, yeah school classes uh, and do workshops uh, and I think this year already we received uh, 2,000 uh, students uh, at that location, and you know we do uh, we do mostly we do street art graffiti projects there. You know to to teach the uh, yeah the youngsters that where it came from, uh, what the possibilities are, what the rules are. You know we're we're not teaching uh, young children to pick up the spray can and do whatever you like, you know, we're, we're really talking about the legal aspects uh, also, of course. Um, yeah, so that's like our education part. Um, yeah, then we have like our magazine. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, insane big because uh, it contains a history of 23 years uh, of hip hop in the Netherlands started from 99 until now and we're still updating it uh, daily and it's it's the only we uh, hip-hop website uh, in the Netherlands that that has the archive because there were a lot of cool uh, initiatives but they uh, yeah they stopped and the whole website went down and all the content is lost and we were still able to uh, have everything uh, online and we were very proud of that so um, then we have the drop zone that's very important for us also because that's that's our online uh, yeah podium uh, everybody can send in their tracks 
videos, artwork, etc. Um, uh, it's not it's not being curated, so everyone is is welcome to join there, and we use it for competitions also. So we work together with festivals, uh, art festivals, and uh, yeah, people can submit the art, and they can you know can win a performance uh, at a festival. Uh, so like the whole development is, is very important uh, over, over there. Uh, and we started a couple of years ago uh, with different kind of uh, podcast. Uh, of course, everybody does, so we did too. Um, but we try to, for us, you know, the podcast, it's important to talk about uh, subjects that is, um, how do you say, uh, you know, it's interesting for long term. So we're not talking about, okay, we have a weekly podcast and okay, which, which albums came out this week, you know, and do that on a weekly basis because, you know, people listen to that like one time and they're going to never, they're going to check it again. So we talk about the whole development in the hip hop culture. So if somebody, you know, uh, is is interesting in hip-hop culture and is 16 years and is, is looking into history, then hopefully uh, he or she will, you know, come to the podcast and listen to the whole development about, uh, for example, we made a, a series about um, uh, a hip-hop battle uh, rap uh, in the Netherlands because that was a whole development uh, also for a period. So for us, that is important uh, to create content for, for long term. Um, yeah, and then our latest projects, if you could switch to... And if you would like, and you have like... Uh, you have a device with you that, uh, that could scan the QR, then maybe we need to switch to the Q QR code first. Yeah, thank you. So if you want to scan, want to join, you know, welcome. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah? Surprised. Yeah. It works. Yeah, yeah, well, when we, when we get in, we will see how many people are able to join. Yeah, that's important to uh, get the sound off <laughs> on your device. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody was able to, sc to scan the QR code? Yeah? yeah. yeah? Error. Oh, really? Maybe, maybe the room is full. I don't know. I don't know. Sh shouldn't be. W what kind of arrow, uh, yeah. error? Yeah? Cool. Yes. Yeah, uh, then, we, yeah then, we, then we will enter the metaverse as well. Yes, there you go. I see a lot of people. So yeah, you see like the inst you see like the instructions on the floor. So I see people jumping. That's one of the options as well. You can uh, can have a have a nice dance. Um, and for us, this is like the 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 last project that we released. Like um, yeah, I think uh, one or two months ago, because we really wanted to extend our website. Uh, because we do a lot of projects that are temporary and we would like to give them a longer life uh, into uh, the metaverse. So if you see the right, you see the whole rewriters project. Maybe I should, yeah, maybe that's better. So like here, you see the whole rewriters project uh, that I was talking about uh, uh, earlier. It's in English and in Dutch, by the way, and it's just free for download if you are interesting. Um, here you see our, uh, our website. Yeah, and if you have any questions, just type them in the chat if you like. That's an option also. Um, and yeah, you, you, could, you could visit the whole website uh, in the metaverse. So that's kind of strange, but it's possible. <laughs> um, and I want to see you want to let Ah, some people changed the, the character, nice. 
Yes, you can jump with the baskets, basketball. So I just want to give you an impression of one of our other projects as well, Art Court. We, uh, we released it, uh, maybe this. Ah, thank you, thank you. So yeah, th this was a project uh, we released uh, in April. Um, and this is a, a sustainability, uh, yeah, basketball court, uh, four, four of them. Um, with the highest, uh, yeah, highest possible uh, quality because in the city, basketball and you know it's um, uh, you know a three on three basketball. Um, it's very it's very popular here, and uh, but there weren't any good fields uh, in the city to play on. So we uh, we decided to uh, to create like uh, four fields with with the basketball community. Um, and yeah, it, uh, the four fields are uh, are up now, and uh, we we decided to uh, to work with uh, an artist that uh, did these kind of uh, artworks uh, already from Hong Kong, Xim, and he's a basketball player as well. So that's the that's the connection. And yeah, the fields uh, the fields are in Rue Langrak Park. It's near Delshaven, and uh, yeah. One of the latest projects we did also, and uh, yeah, the, like before we, we did the project, not a lot of people were playing on that location. Uh, mostly people were running because there's a running track uh, outside of the field, but now the fields are there uh, because I travel daily with the train uh, there, and you can look onto the field uh, from the train, and daily, people are playing and playing. So it's really cool to see that, you know, that how it's, how it's working out. <laughs> this is an impression, uh, this is an impression of, uh, of, the, of the opening. It's really hard to talk and walk, by the way. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's really cool because I see characters I didn't know that they were even possible to choose. Um, yeah, this is like our, um, I will just walk through you. Uh, this is like uh, the space that I talked before. So this is like the exhibition space in our office. Um, and you know, the exhibition is still up, but isn't, it isn't possible anymore to, to visit it, but you can visit it in the, in the metaverse. And that's the whole uh, yeah, strategy <laughs> for us to, uh, yeah, to contain in the future. So we will create more exhibitions and we will give the exhibition a space uh, in, the, in the metaverse. Um, and yeah, that, that is one of the possibilities that we have. Um, but there are a lot of possibilities uh, still, uh, still to explore. So we are thinking about maybe doing a release party of an artist in the metaverse, because you know, that's a possibility as well. Um, and everybody can, you know, can just join as you see, just scan, scan the code or go to the, uh, go to the website and you are, you are in. And this is for us, it's, this is just, uh, just a test version. Uh, but we have a lot of a lot of ideas, and this is another this is another possibility. Here you see all the artworks of the exhibitions, and you can buy them uh, through the metaverse as well if you like. Um, so um, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of possibilities, and uh, yeah, we're very proud with uh, with the first uh, with the first result. Um, so yeah. I think uh, we were in all the rooms. Yeah, this is just another drone shot of the end result. Really like that one. And you can do like you you could do like listen sessions as well, um, you know, because you just can, as you hear, you can integrate music and you just can invite, invite people. Um, 
Yeah, this is the future, exactly. <laughs> I th it's, it's already there. No, I, I think it's like, I think the upcoming year. Upcoming year right? Yeah, I think and a lot of people that I talk with are, are thinking about uh, working with it. And because there are so many metaverses now, that's why yeah. trying to, you know, that one stops the others. And yeah, and you, you have like a lot of, of options because like this is one of the basic yeah. versions that we have, but we have an, um, we, we are gonna work, um, one of the things that we want to do in the near future is collect all the artworks, yeah. all the street artworks uh, of the last eight years and put them in the metaverse, but create them in, an, um, in a space that's, that looks like a museum. Yeah, yeah. So with, uh, you know, with different levels and with stairs and uh, that kind of things. So is, is this your own metaverse? No, we created it with... Um, yeah, with OnCyber. So OnCyber is a metaverse uh, platform. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think that's, I don't know how, yeah. I think that's a nice time to wrap it up, right? So, um, questions? <laughs> Whoa, there you go. Would be cool, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, just you know, just uh, I think um, if people wanna wanna connect, um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. So just you know, just look me up, and that's like uh, if you type Van der Heide as one word, then then you will find me. <laughs> that's that's the most uh, yeah yeah. Uh, I was wondering because you said in the early days we had uh, forums. Um, why did you decide to? Because uh, I didn't see it on the website. Exactly. Why did you decide to uh, leave it? And uh, do you still have an archive of it? Do you keep an archive? We we have an archive of the of the form, um, but we decided to to leave it because we saw that everybody was going into their own space, so the activity was was going down uh, downhill. Uh, so there weren't a lot of people using it anymore. Uh, so we decided to, you know, to, yeah, um, yeah, to leave it and to, you know, to have more a look onto the future, uh, to, you know, to be relevant. Because I think, like, if you, if you are a hip hop organization, uh, then you need to be ahead of things because the whole hip hop culture is developing so fast. You know, you need to, you need, you need to be on top of it uh, because otherwise, then. Uh, yeah, then, then, then you become, I think, an organization that is um, living in the past. So I think it's really important. So that's one of the reasons that we decided to... Uh, and because you, you, you had to... Uh, a good forum needs good moderators as well. And uh, it took a, took a lot of time to have good moderators, you know, because, you know, some discussions went out of hand, you know, uh, mostly political-wise you can imagine like the whole thing that we see now on social media you know we saw it like back in the days on the forum also so yeah all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> other questions what does hip hop bring the children that you have in your education program what do you expect yeah well you know i think i think like hip hop is one of the one of the most easiest art forms to begin with because you have like different levels and you know now we are mostly focusing on uh, on street art but you know we did uh, back in the days we did like uh, we did things with rap and break dance and street dance and DJing uh, those kind of things as well um, and if you see we have a lot of different uh, um, yeah programs uh, within street art so um, we have uh, people, uh, we have artists that works with, with uh, the mini stack, uh, you know, stones. Uh, you can create artworks with that as well. Uh, some, some artists that we work with use spray cans. Some people uh, uh, use uh, uh, paper. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, 
it's really big and that's like the whole thing that we are aiming for as well like street art is more than than that mural on the wall because there are so many different flavors so that's the whole thing that we want to teach the children also that you know if it's if it's hard to do uh, to work with uh, maybe with spray paint no problem then you then you choose something else because there's always a way to be creative and that's like one of the uh, core things yeah yes Uh, to, to be honest, we're, we're not on that point yet uh, because we're yeah, mostly really focusing on being creative and, you know, to, to work with it as a yeah, most simple way uh, because we do, I think we work from mostly the most youngest kids are, I think, are, are, I think are 10 years old, so like between 10 and 21, 20 years old. That's like uh, our target uh, target group that we work with. But yeah, I mean, this I think this is really um, a good topic to think about uh, because yeah, that's 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 totally a thing. Like you know, a lot of children are are really you know into gaming, uh, YouTube, uh, social media, and you know not not going outside and not doing sport, not you know. I have a 10 year old son myself, so I, you know, I know uh, how challenging it can be, but you know, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's really a good thing to think about for the future. Yeah, thanks. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, the f um, our first location was somewhere else. Uh, but then we heard that the, that there were plans to build apartments on that spot. <laughs> really typical Rotterdam. Um, so yeah, we um, yeah we we had a list of our favorite locations. This one was second on the list. But I'm really glad that that we could do it here. But it was a really hard uh, project to uh, yeah to develop because. You, because it's outside, you need to talk about uh, to talk with so many people uh, from the from the government. Uh, you know, people are um, yeah. There there were a lot of things that we didn't thought about before that we need uh, because now if you see um, maybe I don't know if you can see it very well. Maybe on, maybe on this picture. Yeah, what you see here, uh, when you look very closely, maybe I can point it out. Here, uh, you see uh, a football uh, goal. <laughs> so, uh, so they said to us, yeah, you can, do the, you can develop the, the art court here, but... Uh, people uh, still need to be able to play uh, football over there. And we were like, why? Because you can play football everywhere in Rotterdam. Yeah. But that was one of the, one of the things that we need to uh, thought about. Otherwise, we couldn't do it. Um, but, you know, um, it's, it's really nice because the, uh, it's, it's a kind of floor that you can, you can play uh, all kinds of sports on there. I mean, we, we developed it for basketball, but you, you can do, I mean, some people do their fitness uh, training on there. Uh, so 
you know, the, the, the floor is very friendly for, uh, for different sports. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you 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 can you can skate on there as well, and it's a view. It's a very soft uh, soft floor. And so if you fall, then it's uh, it's it, yeah. You know, it's a uh, it's a more uh, how do you say soft it? Landing. Yeah, a soft landing exactly. Soft landing. Yeah. You have a question as well? Yeah. I don't know much about Dutch hip hop. Yeah, doesn't so matter. I, I was wondering if underground hip hop is still a thing. Yeah. No, no, no. Because of, you know, the new trap. Uh, no, I mean, like, the, I, I think, like, uh, nowadays, and that, that, that's not only in Rotterdam, but in the whole Netherlands, like, the, the underground is bigger as, uh, as before, because there are a lot of people are, uh, are working very hard with their own platforms, with their, uh, with their own listeners. Uh, they organize a lot of different events because that's the whole thing like nowadays everybody understands hip-hop so if you if you see a space and you want to organize something there it's so much easier than 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 back in the day so there are a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities so now there's a there's a very big uh, underground uh, scene still and i guess maybe i'm missing when you deal with uh, kids In general, um, when it comes to, I know, Italian hip hop, mm -hmm. um, American hip hop, the teams underground rappers deal with are very different from the teams of mainstream hip hop. So I guess when you work with kids, you try to focus more on those kind of things, yeah. like more yeah, for sure. philosophical. Uh, Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're, we know we're rather than uh, money. No, no, we're not. You know, no, we're we're, we're not going. You know, we're, we're not doing. We're not doing uh, rap wor rap workshops, and uh, then you know, listen to music where they talk about uh, dealing drugs and uh, those kind of things. Yeah. So no, of course. I, I mean, and there are a lot of there are a lot of you know uh, good rappers with with good teams. You know, so uh, yeah, those options are there. Last, last question. <laughs> I'm Sorry. curious. It's a bit of a financial question. I'm always curious because I see the passion. I, I love what you all are doing. I'm very curious. How do you sustain it, and how do you create, yeah, maybe some revenue for new ventures or new ideas? Yeah, it depends. Like now, uh, now we have a budget for uh, for four years, so we can do uh, uh, some projects. We can do it for the long term. So that's more the things that you see that you saw on the website so the whole podcast uh, thing the the street art projects those are all like uh, projects that we that we have the money for because we are granted for four years but if you see like this project for example the art court that was a different funding uh, and, a di and a different uh, path so mostly we work with funding and sometimes we we work with sponsors also so those are like the, the two main things. And for us, it's really important to keep everything for free still. That's really important for us because we really want to have everybody there, you know, if they are interested, so. And the hip-hop culture does like those uh, things. Well, well, they want to buy sneakers for 300 euros. So, you know, it depends on the priority, I think. <laughs> and the goal is to share the culture. For sure. Yeah. That way, to keep it free. It's yeah. Accessible, I think. Accessible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs>